Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So if you're new here, hi, I'm Dave. I'm a first year medical student here in the Philippines. So for today, I asked people of the internet to give questions sa Curious Cat ko. Sa mga hindi nakakilala sa akin, um, I started helping medical students via Curious Cat nung nag-start ako mag-apply for medical school. So since maraming ako medical schools na na-applyan and I have friends sa iba-ibang medical schools, so I tried answering them via Curious Cat. So dun talaga nag-boom yung Curious Cat ko. And then eventually kasi paulit-ulit na rin kasi yung mga questions. Kaya I decided to put up this channel. I got a handful of questions na nakuha. <clears throat> and some of these questions, sana maayos yung maging sagot ko or what. Para sa mga hindi pala nakakala ng Curious Cat, um, it's a platform where anonymously you can ask questions. Dito, kahit gusto ko kayong i-mention or sabihin sa video, syempre hindi ko kayo kailala kasi nakalagay lang dito, Anonymous. So, all of the questions na nakuha ko are from Anonymous. So, let's start. Any advice for students na gusto mag-med sa sikat na medical schools? or yung mga matataas na PR cutoff. Aside for NMAT, ano pa po ba yung need? Usually, ang mga requirement nila is, yun nga, they have certain units na dapat na-take mo, um, extracurriculars, co-curricular, good academic standing, usually yun yun. And for this sikat na med schools, um, abangan nyo na rin yung malaki nilang gastos or malaki yung gastos na pwedeng kaharapin. They offer a lot like facility-wise, hospital-wise, um, caliber of the professors. I'm not saying na yung small schools cannot offer the same pero syempre kapag big medical school ka, you're already an established medical school so you already have the name in the game. So next question. Okay. Do you think it's possible to get any research publications while doing medical school? If yes, do you know how? Feasible yung research publication. Siguro yung research publication na may release mo is yung undergrad research mo, undergrad thesis mo. Yun pa yung mas feasible mong mailabas. Even though may research yung medicine, syempre marami rin kasing pagdadaanan yun. Kung isasabay mo siya sa medical school, medyo mahihirapan ka. So, if you aim to publish a paper, um, I suggest yung highly mong maipapublish is yung college thesis mo or yung undergrad thesis mo. Or even your master's kasi may ibang medical students na nag-master's muna or double degree. So, yun yung mas feasible mong maipublish kesa yung medical research mo during med school. So, next question. Math and physics aren't really my forte. Do you think I'd still have a chance of getting high ER with enough fra practice? Practice, highest I cry. Based sa mga napagtatanungan ko and based sabi din ng review center na pinag-reviewan ko, um, usually kasi students na mabababa ang PR nate-take it for granted kasi yung math and physics. So, yun din kasi yung nagiging factor kung bakit bumababa yung PR nila. And, if you ace your math and physics, there's a high probability that you will get high PR. Kasi nga, the population of the NMAT takers often na uh, mababa yung math and physics nila. Kaya, yun. Kailangan talaga practice, practice, practice. So, tip ko for mathematics, siguro, um, you can go back dun sa mga upkat, mga worksheet, or college algebra. Kasi usually, arithmetic lang naman yun. Algebra and mga word problems. Yun lang naman talaga yung math part. For physics, tip ko to during physics kapag nag exam ka na. Tingnan mo yung units. Salimbawa, kapag nakalimutan mo yung formula, how to answer it. Look at the units and the units ng choices will give you a clue on how to come up with that answer. So, yun na yung clue mo doon. Tapos hanapin mo na lang siya sa problem. Kailangan mo rin kasing maging matalino kahit papano sa, hindi mo sa panguhula. Kailangan may system ka para for guessing daan. Pero yun na, huwag po kayo mag-guess. Study your physics. Next question. May effect ba ang GWA 
from first year to fourth year in college sa medical school. May disadvantage ba if wala kang extracurricular na certificates of seminars you've attended? Salamat. Usually kapag GWA, from first year to fourth year na yun, automatic. So, hindi ko sure kung ano yung question dito. Pero, yes, nagmamatter siya for some medical school. Kasi yung iba, merong cut off sa grade or parang may, may grade ka na kailangan bago ka nila tanggapin. And yung iba naman, hindi nila tinitingnan nyo. Alam ba yung beda, hindi naman sila naging strict sa akin na 2.67 yung GWA ko. And yun. Yung for extracurricular, hindi siya requirement. Hindi naman siya ganun din kalaking big deal. Siguro ano lang siya, makakatulong para lang makita ng medical school na applyan mo na, ah, ito, um, may something may, na may offer pa. May mga leadership skills, um, analytical skills na malalaman mo kapag naging active ka sa extracurricular. Pero, it can help pero hindi siya required. Next question. Usually po ba ilan ang nakakapasa sa San Beda and sa CEO? So, sa San Beda, nung batch ko, may 150 to 200 kami. Tapos nagkaroon pa ata ng second batch and third batch. Did you take NMAT while you're a third year college? Also, how many times did you exactly take it? Nag-take ba ako ng third year college? No. Um, I took NMAT during the first semester of my fourth year college. So, my seventh year in college. So, also, how many times did you exactly take it? I only took NMAT once. Kasi ayoko na siyang ma-experience ulit. Nung lumabas talaga yung TR ko, yung result, um, sabi ko, kahit anong kalalabasan nito, kapag mababa sa 40, uulit ako. Kasi syempre, that's the minimum. Uulit ako. Pero nung lumabas, sabi ko, ayoko na ulitin to. Is it recommendable to pursue masters before medical school? Why or why not? Yung isang classmate, si Ate Dan, um, she have a master's degree in nursing bago siya nag medical school. Um, siguro it helped her. Pero kasi kanya-kanya talaga yun. Halimbawa, kapag hindi mo pa feel mag medical school, huwag kang papasok. Kasi mahirap kapag hindi mo pa siya bet. So yun, if mas bet mo mag masters, go. Yung iba nga mas bet mo na mag law bago mag med. Yung talaga yung hindi ko alam kung gano'ng kalaki yung terabyte ng utak nila. Pero saludo ako sa mga gano'n. Next question. Lame question. But if, if, bakit dalawa? If, if it's true that in med school, back to zero pa, why should one take pre-med that much seriously? Una sa lahat, pre-med, med, um, kahit ano man yan. Law, um, arts, business, accounting, engineering, science. Um, kahit ano man yan, um, education be taken seriously. So yun, if back to zero ka, ang point kasi nung sinasabi ko na back to zero ka is ulitin kasi siya lahat. Pero, to the point na uulitin siya na mas mabilis yung pacing. Halimbawa, yung anafi mo ng, fir- ng undergrad is one sem lang. Sa medical school, one year siya. And parang yung anafi mo is like 5% lang ng buong anatomy and hiwalay pa yung physiology. Nagiging back to zero ka talaga. Like, mangangapa ka. Pero kasi, I think if you talk seriously your undergrad, may lesson kasi silang ma-engrave sa'yo na parang, alimbawa, in math, tinuturo ako yung critical thinking, to think outside of the box, um, to see patterns, um, to use graphs, say, um, interpret graphs, uh, yun, so, and more on visual learner kami. Yun kasi yung mahuhun ng undergrad mo. Yung skills talaga yung maituturo sa'yo ng undergrad mo. Skills and discipline. Yun yung makakatulong sa'yo sa medical school. So please, kahit ano man yung course mo or kahit ano man yung inaaral mo, elementary man yan kung minanood ba elementary student dito. High school, um, senior high, or college, second degree, or what. Um, please take education seriously. Nakabooklet ba per part ang NMAT? Pwede kaya sulatan yung booklet. Example, eliminating ng choices. Talagyan ko yung mark. Ha 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 ha. So yes, nakabooklet siya. Bibigay sa'yo is a booklet. Booklet ng exam. And then, magkadikit na dalawang short bond paper. Scratch paper. 
So, alibawa, dito sa first page, um, syempre, end map. Tapos, name mo, details mo, um, uh, instructions. Answer sheet na to, ha? Instructions, tapos, may makikita, uh, isusulat mo, isashade mo yung booklet number mo, ganun. Tapos, lahat ng details mo. Tapos, pag booklet mo, answer key, dito, yung parang naka, um, bubble sheet. Naka ganun siya. Tapos, apat na column. Kasi, parang four subtests per test. Bibigyan ka ng bagong papel sa hapon. Kasi iba na yun. Um, tapos yung pagbukad mo pang ganun, blank na siya. Scratch paper mo na. Tapos dito, blank ulit scratch paper. So, ang scratch paper mo lang talaga technically is a short month paper na back to back. Yun lang. Yun lang yung scratch paper mo for the four exam. So, ganun din siya sa hapon. Bibigyan ka ng brand new. So, yung physics, chemistry, biology and social science mo. So, ang scratch paper mo dun is just one paper na back to back. Um, for the pwedeng sulatan yung booklet, no, hindi mo pwedeng sulatan. So, meron kasi yung technique na tinatawag na um, eraser method. So, I have an, uh, an eraser tapos hinati ko siya sa dalawa. So, hinati ko siya para pwede kong takpan yung choices. So, yun, tip ko din yun for the perceptual activity. Bawal nyo siyang sulatan na bawal. Um, may tips po ba kayo sa kapwa ng med student na hirap sa anatomy? Actually, ako din, hirap din ako sa anatomy. Parang, sino ba yung hindi? One thing na natutunan ko from April, um, ang sabi niya, when you study anatomy, when you read books ng anatomy, visual kasi ang anatomy. So, mas okay na meron kang atlas for human anatomy. So, buksan mo din siya alongside ng book mo. Sabay mo siyang titingnan kasi Ha, kapag minsan magulo kasi yung pagkaka-explain sa book and mas ma-visualize mo siya sa atlas. Kakayanin kaya kapag pinagsabay ko yung med and work. Or let's say sa atlas. Work hindi. So, feasible pero not really recommendable. Sa personal experience ko, um, nag-sideline ako ng tutor ng mga high school students uh, for math and other subjects nila. Nakapagod siya. Kasi syempre, babiyahe pa ako papunta dun sa tuturuan ko and then uuwi ako. Then I have to study my materials. So syempre, pag nag-shooter ka, you also have to study the material nung tuturuan mong bata. So, mahirap siya for me. Ganun din siguro kapag nag-work ka. Nabawa, uh, for call center, tas night shift, syempre, mahirap yun. Um, hindi mo kakayanin. And depende rin pala sa schedule mo. Sa akin kasi, hindi siya kaya ng schedule ko because my schedule is 8 to 5 p.m. So, hindi talaga feasible. For me, if ikaw kaya mo yon then go. Um, there are other ways naman um, para kumita. Yung classmate ko, si Adi, nagbe-bake siya. So, from time to time, may order siya. So, yon Doon yung sideline niya. Si Kuya Jeff ng All Food Friend ko din, nagbe-bake din siya kasi HRM graduate siya. Uh, yun, yun yung parang dagdag kita niya or source of income niya or additional income. Hi! Anong school ang papayag na to follow na lang ang NMAT? Actually, um, you can visit the NMAT group uh, sa Facebook. Maraming schools or maraming medical students na nagpo-post doon na open sila for to follow na NMAT. Pero yung CEO, uh, um, tumatanggap kami ng to follow na NMAT. Not really to follow. Pero you'll be given a waiver for that. Hi! May idea po ba kayo kung mahirap ang shifter's exam? Yes, I am a shifter. Pero, yung shifter exam kasi is just like Ustet. Swear. As in, same na same siya sa Ustet. Um, I remember the questions ng batch ko. And may mga questions ulit na ganon na lumabas during shifter's exam. So, it's not mahirap um, if nadalian ka ng Ustet or nahirapan ka uh, or any entrance exam kung nadailayan ka nun, usually, it's just the same. Um, bakit yung po pinili yung CEO Med at hindi po San Beda? Thank you! Ah, okay. Nagpasa ako ng San Beda, and then, I took the exam. Tapos, sobrang napanghinaan ako ng loob dun sa exam, kasi sobrang hirap niya. Diba, the questions are like, yung kapitbahay mo, nakabukas yung ilaw, tapos, may options na dun. Yun yung question mo. Tapos, may options na dun. Wala, wala. To no avail, um, walang balita, walang pinose yung bed akong kailan lalabas. Um, sabi nila, magkakaroon ng schedule for interview and then, 
day na ng interview. Sabi nila wala na daw interview, wait na lang daw ng results. So, wala, naghintay ako and sabi ko wala na pag-asa to. Um, so, nag-submit ako sa CEU and then, nung submit ako sa CEU, after one week, in-schedule na kagad yung interview ko. Tapos after one week, after my interview, accepted ako. So, meron lang ako from that day, tapos seven days, seven working days. Monday ko kasi na-receive yung acceptance letter. Tapos, the following Monday noon, barangay election ata yun, or hindi ko sure kung local government election. So, walang pasok. So, hindi rin ako makapag-reserve. So, nung tinanong ko yung office, extended daw siya for two days. So, Wednesday. So, around mga 4pm or 3pm, nagbayad na ako reservation. Kasi I was still waiting for San Beda. And then, wala. Wala talaga. Tapos, ang funny nun, um, that Friday, lumabas yung San Beda. And I talked to my mom. Sabi niya, wala, nagbayad na rin kasi tayo sa CEU and it's just the same. Um, ask ko lang po if totoo yung rule na graduating students and graduate students ang allowed mag-take ng NMAP. I forgot yung process ng NMAP. Kasi that's two years ago. Um, pero, nag-gets ko yung point nito. Kasi yung iba, nag-take sila ng NMAP. Second year pa lang. Second year, third year. Eh, parang most ng mga nagtitake ng NMAT, hindi pa sila ready. So, ang nangyayari, mababa yung score nila. So, naiaangat nila yung ibang students. So, tumataas yung PR ng ibang students. So, para for you to be fully prepared for NMAT, highly recommended na graduating student ka para magtake or graduate student ka para at least majority ng lalabas sa NMAT na pag-aralan mo na or napaghandaan mo na. Siguro yun yung rationale nung bakit kailangan graduating or graduate student na yung magtitake ng NMAT. Pero, hindi naman bawal na magtake. Siguro, third year. Hanggang third year lang yung pwedeng magtake ng NMAT. Cliché, but what are your must-hear advice for those opting to take NMAT? NMAT will never, 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 never define what kind of medical student you will be. NMAT is just like by chance then kung maraming magagaling kang nakasabay during your NMAT, mas malaki yung probability na mas mababa yung PR mo. Um, so, never judge a person by his or her NMAT PR. Um, for NMAT then wag nyo rin i-underestimate yung NMAT kasi sobrang maraming medical students na ayaw na nilang ulitin yung NMAT ever. So, really prepare for NMAT as if it's like a board exam. Kasi yun yung magiging entrance mo. Entrance ticket mo yun to medical school. Don't study before NMAT. Rest. Um, if sa UST ka, bring a friend or bring your mom. Uh, kasi san, sobrang sandali lang. As in, lili, lilipas lang yung oras nun. Na after mo mag-exam, lalabas kayo ng 12 o'clock, kailangan before 1 o'clock nakabalik ka na sa room or sa labas ng room kasi pipila kayo. Kailangan makakain ka na. And sa so, sobrang dami ng tao sa UST, kasi usually, here in Manila, UST yung testing center, sobrang dami ng tao. Um, kailangan nakabili na yung friend mo ng food or meron kang food na nahawa or else magugutom ka. And come early, don't drink coffee um, ng umaga ng NMAT para magising. No, don't do that. Kasi bawal mag-CR. So, if may iihi ka or something, no. Um, don't use digital watch or smart watches. Use... Um, analog watch. So, for my analog watch, please do support Love, Hope, Faith. For every purchase ng watch nila, they donate for children with cancer. So, do support them. Um, I use this. Not this exactly. I have a lot kasi. Oh, ayan. I have this one. I have this one. I have this one. Nasa room ko yung, bay, yung blue. Uh, yun. Pero ito yung mismo yung ginamit ko during NMAT. And this is just 300 pesos. It's nakatulong ka pa. Um, bring jacket kasi sobrang lamig sa UST. Don't bring anything. Yung bag mo lang is dapat yung clear na adventure or clear envelope. Walang dapat ibang laman yun kundi pencil mo. 
um, bring a lot of pencils para hindi ka maubusan ng oras. Mag-sharpen, mag-sharpen, mag-sharpen. And then eraser. Bawal po ang ruler. So use your pencil as a ruler or use your eraser as a ruler. So I suggest, eraser mo, i-cut mo na para for elimination method mo and dapat meron ka rin ng malaking eraser uh, to act as your ruler. Anong year level po pinoconsider ng med school? when checking upon one's GWA. GWA means general weighted average, so it's from first year to fourth year. Uh, yun. Hindi nila titingnan yung fourth year mo uh, alone. Titingnan nila yung buo. Next. What's your biggest adjustment from being a non pre-med, so non pre-med student, to becoming a medical student? Um, adjustment ko, sleep pattern, um, study habits, um, time management, um, friend, um, time with my friends talagang usually na lesson na yun. It's like time for studying talaga. Kahit nasa Egypt, kailangang mag-aral. Kahit nasa Egypt, kailangang mag-aral. During breaks, kailangang mag-aral. Um, yung mga 5-minute break na nila doc or yung 10-minute break, either ikakain mo yan or itutulog mo yan. Um, non-stop na aral. Hmm. Ayan, I'm now using my phone. Kanya, I'm using my camera. So, if nag-shift yung quality ng video, or something, and I'm so sorry. Yung question ngayon is, rate your stay in CEU from 1 to 10. So, I can rate my stay in CEU ng 7 or 8. Uh, siguro kasi marami pang rooms for improvement. Uh, so, I cannot give it uh, 10 or 9. So, how do you cope with stress? I eat. I eat. And I eat. Um... Usually, uh, I watch movies, I watch series. Tiyan try ko ha, tiyan try ko. Uh, Siyempre, always take care of your mental health even though in medical school. Usually, yung talaga yung nagiging problem ng mga medical students, uh, minsan napapabayaan na nila yung mental health nila. So, yun, kailangan nating bigyan din na importansya yung mental health ng mga medical students natin. What are your advice for the incoming med fresh? So, my advice is... Um, you have a long journey ahead. Um, absorb as many information as you can. Apply it in your daily life. Um, use it to be a platform of change, lalo sa panahon ngayon. Kahit first year ka, yes, hindi ka makakapagbigay ng magandang medical advice. Pero syempre, um, people will listen kahit pa paano. Next, sa tingin nyo po, which Metro Manila Medical School have a significant number of Phil Am students? Uh, I am not sure. Onti lang yung alam kong Phil Am sa UST. Uh, maraming foreign. Maraming foreigner, pero Phil Am, hindi ko sure yung exact number. Um, ang sure ako na maraming foreigner is AMA ata. AMA all fo yun, yun yung alam ko ha na madami so last question, may factor ba yung course mo when applying? Um, yes, may factor siya in a sense na syempre if non pre-med ka uh, magiging ano rin kasi yun, magiging factor din yun naisipin nila, o oh, non pre-med to, baka mahirapan to uh, kapag tinggap natin to uh, so kailangan mo ipakita sa kanila na gusto mo mag medical school talaga this is your passion, ganito yung ano mo, goal in life. So, yes, may factor siya. Kasi syempre, aminin natin yung mga pre-meds, meron na silang small background in sciences than non-pre-meds. So, kaya nagiging considered din sila. Kaya sila yung nagiging pre-med. Even though wala naman talaga kasing pre-med. BA ka, um, BS ka, BFA ka, Bachelor, um, bachelor of Music ka, or kahit anong bachelor's degree ka, pwede ka pag-medical school. Depende na lang talaga to sa medical school kung for them factor to. Kasi ang titingnan na lang naman talaga nila dito is yung standing mo during your college or during your undergrad. Yun yung isang malaking factor dun. And your NMAT score. And yung ibang medical school, malaki yung factor for interview. Kasi sometimes, um, student, magaling lang, sa magaling lang sa paper. Pero they lack communications or parang Sometimes your paper cannot fully represent who you are as a person. Kaya merong interview talaga. So ayon, um, 
feeling ko ang haba na nito. Feeling ko wala nang nanonood nito. I'm so sorry. Sobrang haba nito. Pero sobrang dami kasi yung question. Yung haba rin explanation ko. Akala ko like, question lang to na yes or no something. More nag-explain naman ako. So, ayun. Um, if you like this video, um, please hit that like and subscribe button. If you have video suggestions or comments, um, please don't forget to leave it down below or don't forget to support them. Yung mga fellow medical students natin na uh, YouTubers. Um, so, yun. Um, we're here to help you guys to para may enlighten kayo sa papasukin nyo. Kasi ganyan din kami before nung nagsisimula kami. Um, nung kami yung nasa position nyo. Uh, nagahanap din kami via YouTube. So, we're just bringing we're just giving back sa community na to. So, yun. Um, again, this is Dave and till next time.